Okay guys, this is a tutorial on how to set up a dashboard in Bubble um, and how I like to set up my left hand menu and make it responsive uh, for mobile as well. So the first thing um, that I'm going to do is create a new page and we'll call it dashboard. Now this was a uh, a blank install of a new app on Bubble. All I did was delete the default pages, uh, the header, footer, um, got rid of the styles just so I can do it all from scratch. Um, now the first thing I do is um, take it off fixed width because we want the page to be responsive and then we're going to make it 1920 and we'll just give us plenty of length in the page. Okay, so this is our dashboard page and the first thing we're going to do is add a floating group. So we have a floating group and this is where our menu is going to be. So I usually make these 320 wide, top and left alignment. So we bring that all the way to the left. And, um, okay, so we can see this is the bottom of our page and we have our floating group which is the same size. And we don't do any styling to this, no background, anything, because what we're going to do is put a group into the side menu. Okay, now to style this group, which is where our menu um, list of menu pages is going to be, um, I do have a style which I will just add into here. And basically, you can style this however you want. I've just got um, borders, drop shadows, things like that. I've just called it menu. And now we can add that style to here. Oop. Okay, so this has given us a, a nice little um, styled group for our um, menu. Okay, so now if I just have a look at this preview. Uh, one last thing is we will make the side menu fixed width just so when the page gets larger our menu doesn't get larger. Okay, so this can be our side menu here. And this is where we're going to put our pages to be able to navigate our application. Okay, first thing I do is add a repeating group. Sorry, I'm just going to bring that all the way to the edge and we'll center this. Now I like to build um, my menu structure using option sets and we'll just call this pages. Okay, now the, the pages we will say uh, we might have a profile page. Oop. We might have a settings page and we'll have a dashboard page and we'll have a reports page and we will have, what else could we have? Let's just say integrations. Okay, so now um, out of my pages for, for it to structure correctly to be able to have drop downs in the menu um, we go and we will name an attribute called parent and the parent is a page okay so now uh, this is the order of our menu so we can change these so um, we might have the dashboard at the top and we're going to put our 
report under our dashboard menu. And the way we do that is modify and our parent is dashboard. Okay, and now the other thing we need for our menu is an icon. And this is just a text field. Uh, one last thing which I haven't done. Um, is install the uh, Feather Icons plugin, which makes it a lot easier. And I like the, the way that it's styled, but you can use any icons that you prefer. Okay, so let me just bring up Feather Icons. And let's say for our dashboard, we might do, oops, Okay, for our dashboard, we might use an icon such as home. So I'm just grabbing the name of the icon. And we go home. Reports from memory, I think is bar charts. Profile, we can have user. Settings. So I'm just going off memory here, but if you're not sure, you can just go to feathers um, and just grab the name of the icon that you'd like to use. Okay, so we have our option set, which is pages. We have our attributes, which is icon and our parent. And then we, we've created our, our different page menu here. Okay, so now our repeating group is going to give us a list of pages. Um, and we go all pages and we filter all those pages because we only want to show this page's parent is empty. Okay, so we're only going to show the pages on our main repeating group to be the ones because we're going to have a second repeating group underneath underneath, which I'll add now, which is going to be our sub pages. Okay, so this is full list. This repeating group is full list. Okay, now we can add so this is our, our parent page name. So current cell pages, display. Okay, now I like to use Poppins again for design and style. You can choose anything you like, but we might make it nice and big. Okay, so now we have our, our parent. So I'll just show you what that's gonna look like. Okay, so we have dashboard profile settings integrations. Okay, now this was our sub page. So what we want to do is um, when we click on dashboard, we want to show our sub menu. Okay, so we're just going to get rid of the styling there. And we're going to add our feather icon. This is a dynamic image, current sales page icon. Okay, let's show you what that looks like. Okay. So now to show our sub pages, these are all pages filtered. Now we're going to say this page's parent is current sales page. Okay, so that's going to give us our sub pages. Okay, and that's our current cell display. Oh, that didn't go into my repeating group. Sorry. 
Um, let's just change that to two. Okay. Again, we'll give you a look at what that looks like. Okay, so we have dashboard and we have reports, which is our sub menu. Again, we'll get rid of the dotted line styling. And now we're going to put this into a group. Okay. And we'll just call this sub pages. Okay, now th this is how we make it show and on click of our parent page. Okay, so we want to make sure that it collapses. We're not showing it originally when the page loads. Okay. And now we will just th throw these elements into a group. Because we want to say when this group is clicked, we want to toggle this subgroup menu. Toggle sub pages. Okay, so when we click this, it's going to show our sub pages menu. And there we go. Let me just find an icon for our integrations. We might just go with code. So we go back over to here just because we didn't add an icon. Okay, now we have our sub menu. Now we want to be able to, because these ones don't have sub menus, if you click on it, it's still going to show that that subgroup. So we just need to say, put a condition on there saying toggle this only when repeating group, this is our subgroup, list of pages count is greater than zero. Okay, so we're just putting condition, so it's only going to show the subgroup if there are sub pages associated with the parent page. So that will open, but these ones won't. Okay, now to style this a little bit better, we're going to add another icon. Which we can do, we might just move that over a little bit. So we'll grab another feather icon and we're going to pick, I think it's uh, chevron down. Again, this is only visible, so we put a condition on here saying when our subgroup count is greater than zero, we want to show our down arrow. So that's just a visual way of showing oh, Uh, sorry, uh, this element is visible. Okay, so we're just showing here that there there is submenus under this parent menu. I might just bring that in a little bit. We'll just start that a little bit better. Okay, so now we want to say when our subgroup menu is visible. We'll add another um, condition to our drop down feather icon that says when our submenu is visible, 
we're going to change it from chevron down to chevron up. Okay. So that works pretty well. Just to give you some more styling, we might say when this group is hovered, is hovered, the font color can change to this color. And we're just going to add that to our icon as well. So when our parent menu group is hovered, our icon color will be the same color. And now you can see how we have a menu structure to have a parent menu and a sub menu. Okay guys, I'll leave that tutorial there. Um, that's a quick rundown on how to create a menu for a dashboard uh, using option sets. Um, yeah, make sure you subscribe if you if you liked our first video. Uh, let us know in the comments and um, let us know what you're building. And if you need any help, um, just let us know and I can do a, tu a tutorial on that. Awesome. Thanks, guys.